Rudy and I have been writing music for, for quite some time, but with our busy lives, working for OCP, and then being music ministers at our parish, and uh, being parents, and doing workshops throughout the country, it's been very, it's uh, taken a long time to finish this collection, but in the times that we've had the opportunity to write, we always have the community in mind. We always have the people that we serve. And in our writing, we've always thought of, you know, what, what do they need? What will help them? And how, how is it that we can make it so they feel God's presence in their lives? Yes, we uh, the great mystery of, of, of God's design. Sal and I came together, and one of the most um, one of the one of the things that was most important to us was creating new music. And we now have this wonderful opportunity to work with OCP and Spirit and Song to get an opportunity to create new music that hopefully will uh, fall into the consciousness of the Spanish Church of the Spanish speaking mm-hmm. Church. Tell us a little bit about the songs, because as I'm looking, not only do you have nine beautiful songs, but also a whole mass of St. Cecilia. So there's so much opportunity of celebrating our faith in this one recording. Give us a little sense of that as you prepared these songs and then a a mass. Yes. Well, our Misa Santa Cecilia has been out since 2010, I think Mm -hmm. it is. Mm -hmm. It's a bilingual mass setting, and we wrote it in the midst of the new Roman Missal, if you remember mm-hmm. that, all the changes. We decided to go ahead and submit that song, mm-hmm. that mass, and uh, OCP uh, decided to publish it. However, it has never been a part of a CD collection. And we thought, well, you know, since we are going to come out with a new collection of songs, we thought it would be a good idea to include the mass setting, but in Spanish only, so that, you know, the Hispanic community, which many don't read music, they have wonderful talent, but they need the recording. And even though it's available via, you know, iTunes, mm-hmm. uh, some people are still old-fashioned, believe mm-hmm. it or not. <laughs> yes. People still use CDs, yeah. including me. So so that particular mass setting has been out for a while, but we thought it would be a good complement to the songs um, that we we recently wrote, and I'll, I'll let Rudy talk about the yeah. songs. Yeah, as we've uh, matured as composers, we've put into our our list of uh, of um, you know dues for for our for our creative process. Uh, we wanted to include many many of the scriptures that have really impacted us through the years. There are several texts or themes in the, in the recording that are really uh, have impacted us tremendously throughout our lives. So, for example, there's a song called uh, Cristo No Tiene Pies en el Mundo, the title cut, which is based on the prayer Christ Has No Body by, by St. Teresa of Avila. That was, mm. That's a very deep uh, prayer, a, a very deep poem, um, a d- very deep statement for us. And there are others, for example, Amor, which is a song based on the uh, Corinthians reading. Um, it's uh, love is kind, love is patient, mm-hmm. love is ready to forgive, and so forth. That was very important. So there are several prayers and, and uh, texts that just uh, have been a, a huge uh, impact to us, and, and it was a great opportunity to be able to set music uh, to them, set them to music. Right, right. I think um, one of the things that we wanted to achieve through the music that we felt was inspired by the Holy Spirit was to motivate people to take action, mm. to be Christ's body, to be his eyes, his hands, his feet. And... Um, Cristo no tiene pies en el mundo does that, you know, that was, we want people to be fired up, and yeah, I want to make a difference in this world. I want to be, you know, God's hands and and help others. Mm -hmm. And I guess the general theme of the songs that we wrote is discipleship, 
going out, love. You know, one of the songs is called Ama al Señor tu Dios, love the Lord your God. And, and that one talks about the first and second commandments, you know, to love one another, to love God uh, above all things, but also talks about loving your neighbor as you love yourself. Now, for some people that might be, you know, easy to say, but very difficult to do. Mm-hmm. And so with some of these songs, it's more of a trying to inspire people, challenge people to to do it, to live a Christ-like life in this world. One of the other ones that, that Rudy can probably talk about is called Fuego Divino, which is inspired by writings of St. Vincent de Paul. Maybe you can share something, Rudy. Yes, uh, there is a, a, a teaching, and I believe it was a discourse that St. Vincent de Paul did in his life connected to making an analogy between God's love and fire. St. Vincent de Paul put it in in such a way that he uh, wanted to be divine fire, and he wanted that divine fire to consume the world. And it's so so vivid. Um, It just really inspired me to want to... uh, proclaim that thought, and uh, we're super thrilled that we were able to achieve that, create a song that spoke about the need for God's divine fire to consume the world. Wow. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Amen. We're talking with Rudy and Stella, OCP, Spirit and Song, their latest recording. And I want to play just a little bit from that title track because I think you get a sense of that energy, that action is that, you know, music isn't just to be listened to, but it is to get deep in our soul. And then we let it go out into the world and direct our actions, our love, our way of caring for one another. So I want to have our audience hear just a little bit of this and tease you because I hope you get a hold of the whole recording. Here it is from Rudy and Stella here on Mater Day Radio. Stay with us. Music in general mm-hmm. has so much power to yeah. touch people. You know, you you can't help but be touched. And so that's what we're trying to do. Use that that gift that God gave us mm-hmm. to touch people and uh, and, va- and evangelize. Right. You know, the challenge, I think, and we read it a little bit in the latest article of the Catholic Sentinel OCP with their new uh, publisher that will be coming on, but this challenge of looking at how people are accessing music today, and we used to have, well, I remember albums and vinyl, and that was my favorite thing. I do love to have my CDs, but for you as an artist and as, as a publisher as well to get that music out there, how are you accessing digital media, things online to make sure that this music is still accessible to as many people as possible. Yes, that's that's a great point. The the, the accessibility to to the masses of music uh, is is amazing. I mean, on the one hand, it's available to everybody. The other side of it is that artists are having a much more difficult time mm-hmm. trying to make a living out of it. So, it's 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 a tough situation for artists who um, are trying to make this their livelihood. Uh, Stella and I are, are very fortunate in that, although this is a deep and very important part of our uh, identity, it is not our sole income, yeah. We're very fortunate in that regard that we're able to be musicians but not depend on the sales of our albums 
to raise our family, for example. Mm -hmm. But there are others who 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 that's their sole that's yeah. their sole uh, income, and and it's very tough. It's a changing situation. Like I said, on the one hand, it's a gr it's a wonderful thing because we can evangelize through so many more out channels. But at the same time, there's so much more music out there that it's hard to get people's attention. You know, we have been musicians for a very long time. We're going to keep being musicians, mm -hmm. and we will roll with the punches and keep shouting out from the rooftop that that God lives and that we we are we. Uh, his faithful service servants and his witness and our witnesses to to his love and his power. Mm. One, one thing that I, I will mention is that OCP is is making great efforts yeah. to provide music in in the medium that people are now getting their music through social media, iTunes, Facebook, YouTube. So we are tapping into those areas. I'm sure we can still learn more. Right now, we're kind of in transition. We're trying to reach new markets through digital uh, efforts, social media efforts, while still trying to maintain the, the, the traditional way of reaching people through CD. But it's what Rudy's saying is that it is kind of difficult for artists to make money off of their music to provide for their families because nowadays the streaming services or even DPL, selling DPLs or iTunes, um, they don't pay all that much. So as CD sales go down and the streaming goes up, those services don't really pay out very many royalties mm -hmm. to composers and artists. So there is a little bit of an ongoing conversation regarding that because, you know, after all, we all want to continue our mission. Yeah. And every artist, composer should be compensated for their efforts so that they can continue. We're going to continue because this is who we are. We are artists, and but we are before artists, we are ministers mm -hmm. here to serve God. Right. What? How do, how do you direct this particular CD to the music mus musicians, those who are really involved in the music ministry and their local parish? How do you hope this will serve that community? One thing that, that we are hoping is that uh, they'll have more options for expressing their love for God and, and their allegiance to, to the church. And as I mentioned earlier, the option, the, the, the possibility to sing some of these texts is, is also something that, that I think will be very important. I know that for myself, uh, being able to, to sing the text for Corinthian, for the Corinthians reading of, of, of love, that, uh, a reading that represents love, for me it, it is very rewarding, satisfying, you know, having the option to be able to sing that and to, and to express it in such a way that I get excited over, I get thrilled and having that option be available to other musicians, I think, is, is very beneficial. Mm -hmm. I think that one of our main goals was, obviously, to create songs that could be used in the liturgy, with choirs. And, and of course, Rudy and I, we, right now, our main focus is, is uh, we focus a lot in the Hispanic community. Not that we don't want to serve the English community, but we're, right now we're like, well, where do they need us the most? Mm -hmm. So that's the area where we've been focusing on. A lot of, uh, most, if not all, of the songs that we write wrote are based on scripture or writings of saints because we wanted to make sure that the music, the text, had depth and a good message. But at the same time, we wanted to make sure that it sounded, um, that it felt more contemporary because uh, the Hispanic church is very young. Mm -hmm. If you look, go to any Spanish mass, you're going to see that the, the, the medium age is going to be like 34. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, and you're going to see that you have a lot of kids, a lot of youth. So we wanted to make sure that we were creating music that they could identify with stylistically. Mm-hmm. Uh, however, we did include one English-only song in this collection called Open Our Eyes. And it's, it's going along the same lines that we want to be think clearly, see clearly, so that we could follow Christ more 
closely. Mm -hmm. So this is one that maybe Rudy can talk about a little bit. It's it's one of those, maybe we can play a little bit of it later, uh, called Open Our Eyes. Yeah, this, this particular piece, uh, Dina, was uh, written as a um, piece to commemorate a the 50th anniversary of the Diocese of Stockton. Stella and I were commissioned to write a piece for that celebration. They wanted to use a a pastor letter from Bishop uh, Blair, and it was a quite a quite a journey because um, Bishop Blair, of course, writes so elegantly and so poetically. It was a challenge for us to find from a you know a letter of. It, it was substantial, mm-hmm. and and so we were challenged to find something further. But we're, we were very happy to uh, be guided by the Holy Spirit and be able to find pull something out. And it's and it's become one of our favorite songs. It, it speaks it speaks about uh, the church itself. Uh, and we decided to divide it into the young people, the, the 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 those who were old, and then those and and the church itself that is uh, perfectly imperfect. And, and therefore uh, needs to have clarity in their lives, and they need and we needed to demonstrate God in all we do. Yeah. God needs to be present in everything we do. Mm. So we're, we're super excited about it. Yeah, we are young, we are broken, and we long to find our place. We are old and forgotten, and we long to see your face. We're going to close the hour with this song, and it's nice. Our, our friend Tom Booth, it looks like, helped you along in this process as well, who is a wonderful Spirit and Song OCP member, veteran, I'll call him. <laughs> I don't think mm-hmm. good to mad at me for that. But what a gift, what a gift that music is, and we're grateful at Catholic Radio that we can share that gift of music in many different ways. Uh, Christo no tiene pies en el mundo, and the recording, the best way for people to get a hold of the CD, Rudy, how can people get the album? OCP.org. OCP.org. OCP.org is the best way because you know what? If you if you if you get the CD, you get a, a, the actual CD, and you get a really cool packaging. You get the and words, get the and you get the mass. Absolutely. Yeah. If you buy, if you if you can also acquire it through all of the digital sources mm-hmm. such as iTunes and Spotify mm-hmm. and Amaz- and uh, and mm-hmm. Amazon and so forth. Um, if you don't get the physical copy, you don't get the mass. Yeah. So the the mass is only available if you buy the CD. Okay, it's but, worth it. I mean, the de- the mass setting Misa Santa Cecilia is also available available on its own as a DPL through iTunes and other social okay. media outlets. Okay. Okay. Good. OCP.org. Again, visit all of the artists there. And we're so grateful to hear the music. And I'm looking forward to more projects with you both in the future. So we'll keep our prayers going this Easter season. Rudy, I'd like to ask you as we close, would you lead us in a closing prayer? Yes, absolutely. Thank you. Dear Lord, thank you for this day. Thank you for another opportunity to serve you. Thank you for all you give us, for everything you take away. Thank you for Dina and the wonderful ministry and work that KBBM does in the Pacific Northwest. We thank you for the gift of communication, so important to evangelizing, such an such a essential part uh, of what we do. We thank you for the gift of music. God, in, our gracious and, and wonderful God in your wonderful wisdom and mercy gave us music so that we can express ourselves and we can express our love for you. Lord, please guide us. Make us instruments of your peace in this dif- at, at this difficult time. And we ask you that you bless Dina, KVBM, OCP, and all that work in this ministry. Amen.